fellowship and a great season of celebration, but it will still indeed be a season of ministry as well. So having said that, I want to speak to our occasion this morning. I want to use a passage of scripture that would help put a frame around our season this year. And so if you, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter, look at a rather familiar passage to some, perhaps maybe not so familiar to others, but indeed it is a, it is a rich collection of words. Sec, in 1 Peter chapter number 2, beginning with verse number 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Peter says you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I want to talk this morning from the thought, this is us. This is us. This is us. There are all kind of expressions of what it means to be a church. Churches all across this country have so many characteristics and qualities that make them what they are. You go and look at their structures. I remember the Brentwood Church in Houston, Texas went through a major renovation and expansion campaign and they installed a McDonald's franchise inside of their Family Life Center. The Lakewood Church has a series of escalators inside of their narthex, moving people from level to level. Their utility bill is around $100,000 a month or something like that. Just crazy. Churches have all kind of apparatus and all kind of unique features and qualities that give them definition. Like churches, families have stuff that make families unique. Y'all know ain't nothing like family, is it? Family, there, there is not a, a more diverse cast of people that are connected than that of family. Because you got standard people in every family. Every family has a genius in it, right? You know, every family got that one relative who knows everything, right? My man here, you standing up right here. He, every family got that relative who knows everything. And he got a word on every circumstance, right? No matter what is raised, right? He, you, come in, you come in the house with something brand new. Plane just went down. An X place. Unk come out from the back of the house. Yep, show sure did. Show sure did. Fell right out the sky. Show sure did. Every, every family has a, has a comedian. Every family has a, you know, every family got that angry person, right? That militant person, right? Every family got somebody in there, he's mad about something, or she's mad about something. Just something has ticked him or her off, and they have never gotten over it. And so every family gathering, they make sure that everybody knows that they still mad, Right? Every family has the black sheep, right? 
every family got somebody who got some kind of dark history. They, they don't quite, you don't have to figure out how they fit in the family yet. You know, you, you ask, is, is Uncle John really my uncle? Everybody got that relative who, who we only got pictures of them, but we've never met them before. But everybody talk about them because they, they know them very vividly. Oh, yeah, I'm just talking about family. Just, just family, you know, every family. And, and, and that black sheep is still somebody's child. Everybody in the family talking about them but Big Mama. Big Mama call him her baby. Y'all been not talking about my baby. Everybody know Junebug ain't good for nothing. But he bring Big Mama joy. But the cousins know Junebug is the fun uncle. Oh yeah, he come with all the prizes and the toys and, the, and all the neat stuff. And everybody else give him the side eye because they know Junebug ain't got no job. So where he come from with all these gifts and stuff. But the point I'm making is that, that these are the things that make family, family. Family ain't made by the house that you live in. Family ain't made by the cars that everybody drives. But family is made by the people that comprise that unit. And so the argument is that it's not our house that make us us. But it's this stuff. It is, this is us. This is who we are. Peter writing to a community of Christians in exile who have been scattered across the region of Asia Minor and Peter is writing to them, helping them understand their identity in Jesus Christ. He goes down a list, a litany of characteristics and qualities that are unique only to Christians. And he wants to make sure that they understand that this is who you are. As we enter into our season of celebration, New Hope, I don't want us to get caught up in some superficial, trivial things about us. Yeah, we got a nice structure that we gather in, but that don't make us who we are. Yes, we got some nice cushion chairs in the sanctuary, but that doesn't make us who we are. Yes, we've got some colors that are coordinated, and we got a lot of instrumentation in worship, and we got a high level of skill in musicianship, but that does not make us who we are. But like family, we've got our own characters. We got somebody who know everything. We got somebody who's argumentative. We got somebody who may be a little bitter we got some people with some colored pass we got some people that will give you the shirt off of their backs we got some people who just are uh, just can't just started coming around they brand new they've been adopted into the family we got all of it but on top of that we too have these characteristics that peter shares with these christians and so if you would just let me walk us through this on the threshold of our celebration, I want to present to us this morning, church, this is us. Amen? Amen. The first thing is that we want to understand is that we are a special people. We are a special people. And I'm saying, yes, I, I, was, I was asked some questions just this morning. I was taking care of some, another project, and I was, asking, I was asked a question what is it that I believe, or why do I believe that New Hope Baptist Church is a special place? And I began to start talking about you all. I began to start talking about us. And that's what Peter is saying to these Christians, because they're facing extreme persecution. They're facing hardship. They're facing trial after trial after trial. And Peter wants to assure them that you are a special people. He says that you are a chosen people. Now, I could just camp out right there and spend the rest of the day arguing this fact and celebrating the fact that we have been chosen. And we haven't been chosen by just anybody, but we've been chosen by God. And I know that everybody in here at some point in your life knows how good it feels to be chosen. It starts as early as the playground or the sandlot 
or the blacktop when everybody has to line up and it's time to pick teams and everybody's got that nervous energy because you don't want to be the last one picked and I and, and you know I'm glad to say I can report that I never was the last one picked I wasn't the first one picked either and so but but because by virtue of the fact that I was picked and usually the best players got to pick the teams that when I got picked by the best player it made me feel some kind of way it made me run a little bit faster it made me it made me play a little bit harder in fact it didn't make me no better but in my mind I just thought I was better I thought I was I thought I had exceptional skills because I had been chosen by the best player I don't know who this word is for this morning but you've been going through life wondering if you matter to anybody else Friend, sir, ma'am, let me tell you something that you definitely matter. You matter because you have been chosen and you have not been chosen by just anybody, but you've been chosen by the God of heaven. That God thought enough of you that he picked you and he took you just the way that you are. God took you and chose you in all of your darkness and all of your insecurity and in all of your inconsistencies and in all of your pain and all of your triflingness and all of your crookedness and all of your wayward witness. God still chose you. He chose us and God didn't wait for us to make ourselves better. God didn't wait for you to fix yourself up. God didn't wait for you to dress yourself up. God didn't wait for you to get in tune and get in step. But while the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. And that is good news today. Stop sitting there acting like I got chose because of my exceptional skills. Stop thinking God chose you because you can sing. Stop thinking that God chose you because you're smart. God chose you and he chose you while you were a filthy rag. And the the only reason why you smart is because of the grace of God. The only reason why you have what you have is because of his grace. And so God chose us. It says you are a chosen people. The Bible says for he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. We run around here feeling bad because of what other folks say about us and what they think of us. And we are depressed because they did not choose us. But there is a choosing that is far more valuable than somebody else. And if we did, the truth be told, sometimes you don't get chosen and it had nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with their insecurity. Sometimes folk won't choose you because you threaten them. Sometimes people won't choose you because you make them look bad. Sometimes people won't choose you because they just don't know how to handle you. They don't know how to handle your giftedness. They don't know how to handle your uniqueness. They don't know what to do with you. But the Bible says that God chose us. There's nothing random or chance about this. That God made a very sober determination. When he said, I'm going to take Earl, I'm going to take Johnson, I'm going to take Smith, I'm going to take Lewis, I'm going to take Jackson, I'm going to take whoever, I'm going to take Pimpleton, I'm going to take them, and I'm going to take them just the way that they are. And I'm going to take them, and I'm going to fix them up and make them just the way that I want them to be. That's good news right there. This is us. And so now we ought to act like, in fact, he says that we are God's possession. We belong to somebody. When you know that you belong to somebody, it has influence on who you are. It speaks to our dignity. It speaks to our character. It speaks to our value and self-worth that we were chosen. But then there's more. It says that we are a special people, but also we have special position. Special position. See, in God's choosing... God doesn't just choose you and then cast you aside. God does not just choose us for the sake of choosing us, but he chooses us and with the selection comes. It comes activity. Now I'll talk more about activity in a minute, but, but it comes with position. 
in God's choosing, he chooses us. And the Bible says that, he, he, that we are a royal priesthood. That, that royal, that, that means something. We understand royalty. After all, now maybe, now, now some of us, you know, some of us, you know, you got that, that one uncle. This is us, right? You, you got that uncle or that auntie that swears. You know, they act like they better than everybody else in the family. You know, they, they, they grew up in the same backwood shanty on the other side of the tracks that you did. But for some reason, they, they, they got an air about them that's different from everybody else. They, they may have come from there, but they just, they don't, they, they the only ones that don't know it. They, they are royalty. And so they, you know, they dress it, you know, they, they buy the same clothes you buy from J.C. Penney's. But they call it Jacques Penney. Because they, they, they're royalty, see. You know, th th theirs is not Target, theirs is Target. Because they're royalty. God, that, that Peter says that we are a royal priesthood, that there is something regal about us. There is something superior about us, and it has nothing to do with us, but everything to do with God. And in that priesthood, that we are no longer a portion of Israel, serving as priests, but the entire nation. Now let me tell you something about position. That, that means that in the priesthood, in the Levitical priesthood, God chose a selection. He, he made a selection of a, of a certain portion of the nation of Israel. He assigned the Levitical priesthood or the Levites, this tribe, they were to be the priests who would represent the nation before God. The priest would enter into the holiest of holies, but not just any priest, but the high priest. And the high priest would carry the burdens of the nation before God and atone for the nation's sin. But that has something to do with position, that there is a person or a group of people that have an extra level of status and position in the presence of God. And this status and position enables and allows them to enter into the presence of God. What Peter is saying is that God has chosen you. And now God has given you this access and God has given you this position that you are a royal priesthood, that every believer in here is a priest. Stop thinking now, don't think about black shirt and white banded collar, but think about the fact that you have access into the presence of God. Think about as a priest now that God has opened the door and God has enabled you and allows you to enter into his presence in your own time, in your own way. You ain't got to make no appointment. You can just go in because you deserve to be there, that you have priesthood, that you don't have to make an appointment. You don't have to call somebody else. You don't have to stay on hold. You don't have to go in and, and see if you qualify. You are qualified by the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't need Jermaine Reese to go in before God on my behalf. I can go in on my own. I don't need Lamar James to tell the Lord as my own story. I can tell him myself. I don't need somebody else to tell the Lord what I need. I can go in and tell the Lord it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I can go in before God and I can go to God at my own time. If I need to go at 3 in the morning, he's still up. If I want to go at 9 a.m., he's there waiting for me. If I want to go when I get off from work, I can go right there. If I want to go while I'm on the line, I can go in right there while I'm working. Put my stuff together. But praying unto God. He says that we are a royal priesthood. We all have priestly access to the throne. That we are a holy nation. We are set apart for God. Enjoying his special presence and favor. But check this out. If God wants us to be different, then why do we try so hard to look like the rest of the world? God went through all this trouble to set us apart. 
We're working too hard trying to undo what God is doing. We work too hard trying to be accepted and mainstream. We work too hard trying to make our songs and our music sound like everybody else's music. We work too hard trying to try on their fashion and make it appropriate and applicable in our places of sacredness and worship. Now, I ain't down at how you want to dress in your individual expression, but the point is God set you apart. God made you different. Anybody in here who knows that you are peculiar, you ought to embrace your peculiarity because the Lord made you that way. Anybody in here, you feel like you are less than because you don't look like everybody else. You ought to embrace the fact that you're not like everybody else. In fact, it takes courage to be different from everybody else. It, God knows who to make different from everybody else. God knows who to make square in the midst of round folk. God knows who to make short in the midst of tall people. God knows who to give an afro to when everybody else wearing fades. God knows who to make different different because it is a blessing from God because he has set us apart we have position and then there's this other matter then so God God has made you special he's put his mark on you made you a special person you're his possession and you ought to you ought to rest in that that you belong to God so what if people, there are people out there that mishandle and mistreat you. And the only reason why they do this is because you don't know who you are. And you don't know who you belong to. But when you know who you are and who you belong to, there'll be some stuff that you just won't go for any longer. You will realize that I'm worth so much more than this. You'll realize you can't talk to me that way. You realize, no, you, it ain't going to go down like this today because I belong to somebody else. And because I belong to him, this is royalty right here. This is royalty right here. And so royalty has to be handled a certain kind of way. Now listen, that doesn't mean that everybody got to roll out the red carpet for you. Don't get it twisted now because Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And so that what that means then is that the royalty, if you don't understand it for yourself, it makes no difference what you do to yourself on the outside. This is this last thing. You got special position, but then the last thing is that we have special purpose. Listen, watch the pattern here. Peter says you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that that it's that word that that word that what what follows that he's he's setting up all the stuff God sets up all of this identity for a specific purpose God went through the trouble to call you out of darkness to make you a people, to make you a royal priesthood for one purpose. And that purpose is that you may give him praise, that you may give him praise for bringing you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That God has given us purpose, and that purpose is that we would make him look better. God has poured out his blessing on you and me, that he might get glory through our lives. That we become the living trophies of God. That God has done what he's done in your life that you may give him praise. This morning when Brian gave us all that good lashing. When Brian whooped us this morning because we came in with this. And he's letting us know the Lord did so much more. Then for us to sit back and do this, that the Lord has blessed us and called us and made us into a people that we give him praise, that we make his name big, that we honor him and that we glorify him, that we remember that we are who we are by his grace. This purpose here. Listen, God has chosen you to be this people, but it's not our praises. But it's his. 
Don't get it twisted. Stop trying to sing your own praises. Quit telling everybody where you went to school and who you studied with. Stop telling everybody how many hours you took of this and how many hours you took of that. Stop telling folk you was the first this and the first that. Stop telling people all the stuff that you did and just start letting people know what God did through you. That God opened the door for you. And that if it had not been for God, you wouldn't be where you are. Stop telling folk that you got what you got because of you. Stop telling people she didn't have no choice but to marry you because you had the best muscles and you had the best swag and you had the best wardrobe. He had to marry you because you had the best curves and you had the best walk and you was like poetry in motion. No, you need to tell people that it was nobody but the grace of God. It was nobody but God who did this. What you looking at right now, you are looking at God's masterpiece. He made me, and he formed me, and he shaped me, and he molded me, and he's still working on me, and he's not done with me. You think I look good right now? You just keep on waiting, and the Lord will make me come forth and shine like pure gold. Because he's working on me, church. And so I'm not going to wait until the Lord finishes. I'm going to praise him every step of the way. I love to hear Marvin James lead us in that song. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him in the evening. God is my rock. Rock of salvation. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all of my praise. Some of y'all still sitting down. Some of y'all waiting on something else. I'm there. I'm here. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be, but I'm only here because of him. I'm only here because of his grace. And the Bible says, let everything that have breath, let it praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath, let it praise the Lord. Listen, he, he helps them. He helps them appreciate and understand. Peter says, he says, look, he says, once you were not a people, he said, but now you are the people of God. He said, you used to be in darkness, but now you are in this marvelous light. Listen, y'all, I got one thing to tell you. And it's the same thing that Big Mama used to tell all of us. She'd tell us, don't forget where you come from. She'd tell us, don't forget where you come from. In other words, quit acting brand new. Quit acting like you always been like this. You ain't always look the way you look right now. You ain't always been driving the way you driving right now. You ain't always lived the way you've been living right now. God remembers when you used to have nappy and kinky hair. God remembers when you used to be tacky and wore somebody else's clothes. God remembered when you used to sleep outside. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that he's given us his grace and he's given us his mercy. And all I want to do is tell the world that it wasn't me, but it was God. 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 God made a way. God made a way. God made me better. If you don't believe me, can I get a witness in here? Did God make you better? Did God make you better? Hallelujah. 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 Let everything that had breath, let him praise the Lord. Listen, I want you to think about the goodness of God. You ought to find that thing that God has done for you. Find
find that thing that God is doing for you right now and give him praise right now. Find that thing that God is doing and give him praise. Tell him thank you. Tell him hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Listen, every, every now and then, you ought to get outside of yourself and your comfort and express your praise to God. It is in order. Every now and then, it takes a little something extra. Every now and then, you got to step outside of your little comfort zone. You got to move that sometimes this ain't enough because you're thinking about what God has done for you. When you think about where the Lord brought you from, when you think about how God opened doors that nobody could open, when you think about how the Lord made a way out of no way, am I on your street yet? How the Lord kept gas in your tank, how he kept water out of your house, how he kept the devil out of your marriage, how he kept your children in school, how he kept your body healed, how the Lord moved in your life. This ain't enough sometimes. Sometimes you got to give him this. Sometimes you got to give him this. Sometimes you got to get out of your aisle. Sometimes you got to high five somebody. Sometimes you got to tell somebody you looking at a miracle. Sometimes you got to tell somebody if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I'd be. And so you got to give him praise, church. You got to give him praise, church. You got to give him praise. That the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. This is us. This is us. It's what we do. We praise God. We remember God. We reflect on God. And we know that it's only by his grace and his mercy that we have what we have and had it not been for him we would not be here right now and so if you're looking at me crazy and wondering why do i do what i do just know that he's been too good for me not to do it you looking to be wondering why do i clap my hands just know there was a time when i didn't know if i'd be able to clap my hands you wondering why am i standing on my feet because there was a time where I was too low to stand on my own. But only by the grace of God that it brought me, that it carried me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. 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 Don't get amnesia, y'all. Don't get amnesia. Don't get amnesia. You don't deserve this moment right here. I'm looking at a room full of folk. You got too much to be thankful for. I'm looking at a room full of folk. Don't make me start calling names. But I've been with you. I've been praying with some of you. I've seen the tears in your eyes. Don't get amnesia. But just help me now that I don't have to call your name. But let somebody else know I'm one of them people. He talking about me. He talking about me. Don't get amnesia. God's been too good. Been too good for us to sit on this blessing. Been too good for us to be silent about his grace. He's been too good. For us to act as if he owed it to us. God didn't owe us anything. But he gave us his blood. And the least I could do is tell him thank you. 
least I could do is tell him hallelujah. The least I could do is tell him praise God. Praise his name. Amen. 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 Listen. You are somebody. Don't ever lose sight of that. That don't let don't let the stuff around you undermine who God made you. Don't let don't let circumstantial stuff speak louder than the stuff that don't change. See, see Money is circumstantial. Change is it comes and goes. Comes and goes. Some of us like, well, it still ain't come for me yet, preacher. And maybe it hadn't come yet. But, 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 but listen, this right here, God's choosing is here. Chose you. God made you something. He made you a royal priesthood. You are his chosen possession long to him sometimes that just makes all the difference in the world and my circumstances can't help but catch up to who I am and it'll happen in God's time I don't need the stuff to validate who I am the word tells me who I am mm. I don't I don't need your applause to validate who I am the Bible already says it whether you want to say it or not, the book already says I'm chosen. Whether you want to give me props or not, the book says I'm royal already. Whether you, you, you can keep me out all you want, but I got access of my own. Maybe I can't get in your club, but I can go before the throne of grace. Maybe I can't get in your circle, but I can enter into the holy place. I can let the Lord know what my troubles are. And there may be somebody this morning still finding yourself on the outside outside looking in saying i want i want that i want to be that i want to be a part of the celebration friend let me tell you something you can be that you can be a part of the celebration there's no special procedure or process there's no initiation process you ain't got to pledge cross over to be in the family of god had no initiation. You ain't got to be. You ain't got to be quali pre-qualified. Don't have to worry about what nobody else in here think. But if you're saying, "I want that," I want that for myself, the Bible says all we need to do is to accept, believe, and confess the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins. And the Bible says then we will be saved. I want to offer somebody this opportunity right now this morning. I want to offer you the opportunity to accept these truths as your own somebody right now sitting there wondering who am i am, am i even valuable to anybody and i'm telling you absolutely you are maybe the person sitting next to you don't know nothing about you but god knows everything about you maybe you're trying to cover up all your scars all of your dirt all of that you're trying to cover it all up god says don't, 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 don't cover it up. Let me cover it up. Because you're not going to do a good job. Some of it going to still show. So God's saying, your covering is not going to be sufficient. In fact, God says, I want you just like that. I'm going to take your dents, scratches and all. I'm going to cover you with my blood. It's got these symbols here before us. God says, I'm going to make you better than before. But what I need you to do is I just need you to say yes to me. Maybe somebody here right now, you need to say yes. These individuals are standing. They're standing just that we might embrace you. We might welcome you. We want to be a welcoming presence as you think through this decision. There may be somebody here right now saying, I want that for myself. All you got to do, lift your hand or get up from wherever you are. Just, just step into the aisle, move this way. We'll take it from there. Only reason why, because we just need to identify who you are. You don't have to speak to anybody. You're not going to have to come and tell us your name and why you come and then let us decide, well, I think she's good. I think he's worthy. None of that matters. 
Because truth be told, everybody in here, we ain't none of us worthy. Why you think we keep coming back every week? We got issues. All them folk that I talked about in the family, that's all of us in here. Every one of us. We got the crazy uncles in here. We got the know-it-alls in here. We got the bitter people in here. We got the sweet people in here. We got all of them right here. This is us. But guess what? The crazy uncle and the black sheep, he's chosen. The bitter ain't he, the mad ain't he? She's a royal priesthood. And it doesn't mean that God likes her the way that she is, but God is working on her and changing her. God will do the same for you. Why don't you just come right now? Maybe, maybe saying, well, you know what? I got saved a long time ago. I'm good. But the Bible says that every believer needs to be a part of a local church fellowship. Because God did not save you and bring you out of darkness into light for you to shine as a single candle. God saved you and made you a part of a community. And now we become expression of God's earthly community right here locally. God bless you, brother. Thank you, man. God bless you. Now listen, my brother here got up, but somebody else needs to make this decision. You sitting there saying, I don't want to be the only one to get up. But if he gets up, somebody else can get up as well. Somebody else is saying, okay, somebody, okay, I, I got it. You got to do it now. You got to do it. Why don't you come? Don't put this off any longer. Don't wait any longer. Stop, stop making all them empty promises. Stop saying stuff like, yeah, next week I'm going to do it. You said that last week. Stop saying, well, when I get, when I get my money together. Stop saying that because we know that ain't going to never come together. Because we all got that relative too, don't we? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me holler at you, nephew, right quick. Let me holler at you, 20. Let me, get, let me get 20. Let me get 20 from it. Get it to you next week. Get it back to you next week. Y'all got that, y'all got that uncle talking about his check coming? Yeah. Waiting on his check? Yeah. My check coming. My check coming. That's just code for it. I ain't got it. But if I had it, I'd give it to you. Come on, y'all. Let's just be free. This, this is us. Let's be family this morning. Be a part of our family. It's important because you see, um, in all of our eccentricities, all the stuff that makes us unique, God uses all of it to make you better. I know you can't fathom that. You're like, how in the world can a, can a, a group of, of, of misfits and people who, 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 who some X stuff, how can ex-offenders and addicts and divorcees and and all these other how can these people have something good for me i tell you what though because you know uh there's some experience out there that you're gonna go through and you don't know what it is but but when you hit it there's gonna be somebody in here who's been there been on the other side of it who can encourage you Better yet, you might hit something that ain't nobody else in here hit before. And God picks you to go through it. That you might be a blessing to us. I'm just making an appeal on behalf of the family. And we're saying we want you to be a part of our family. Because you got something that we need. All you got to do is get up and come. Get up and come. We want to celebrate with you. We want you to be a part of us. We want you to be a part of God's family first. And then you can be part of New Hope. Second, we'd love for you to be a part of us. Don't put this off. Stop making excuses. Because you know what? This might be your last opportunity. People don't like when I say stuff like that, but it's the truth. There's no guarantee that you're going to get up from that seat right there. There's no guarantee that you're going to see next Sunday. No guarantee that you're going to see Monday morning. If this was your last 30 seconds on planet Earth, what would you do with it? If you close your eyes and open them up in heaven or open them up before God, you have confidence in knowing that should this be your last day on Earth, would you spend heaven, spend eternity in heaven? Now listen, as some people like to, they love to, to feel good by our music. But this is more important than good sound and music. People, people like to be entertained by the African-American worship experience. 
This ain't no show for us. This is how we express, but this is the real deal for us. You need the blood of Jesus Christ. You need this covering. You need this free gift of salvation. And it is our responsibility to make Jesus known, to share his gospel. That's what God commands us to do. Our praise, our praise is not about us telling everybody about how good we got it. Our praise is about telling everybody how good God is. I'm praising, let you know that this thing is real and it really did happen to me. I really was in darkness and God brought me out of light. And he told me every chance I get, let the world know about it. So that's what we do. Therefore then, by virtue of the fact nobody else is moving, that we then believe then that everyone in here is in right standing with God. Should this be our last day together on earth in worship, we'll all worship him together on the other side. Amen. 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 Let's thank God for our brother who came this morning. Amen. Amen. Our deacons are coming now as we prepare to worship God at the table. Let us now make ready now as we worship at the table as we observe the lord's supper our deacons are coming deacons are coming amen amen this is this is one of the great ordinances of the church the lord's supper i say it and i'll say it again this month this is the pinnacle of christian worship you are at your highest and your best self in worship when you are gathered around the Lord's table. As we now sit in the company of the disciples as they did 2,000 years ago. Jesus shares with them and that before them they are celebrating the Passover feast. The Passover feast was to commemorate the passage of Israel out of Egypt. 